Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an HP Stream. The model on this one is a 14-AX101 model. And in this video, the client brought this one in because of the some of the keys are not working. I think he or she dropped some water or something happened and it's slowly starting with one key and it's expanded over time and now none of the keys are working. So there's two solutions to change this one. You can either change the whole palm rest because this keyboard is, is attached to the palm rest, which is the plastic on top. It's an way extra money to pay for uh, something that is not broken, which is the palm rest. So you can actually order the keyboard itself. It's called a mesh keyboard because it's really flexible and it, it has a rivet pulse, so it has to be uh, rematched or has to be riveted on top of the from the bottom to the palm rest and in this video I'm going to show you guys how you can replace the just the keyboard on your laptop for this model I'll try to give the link for the uh, keyboard the new keyboard I'll leave it in the video descriptions and the tools that you're going to be using is just a chisel tool and a workshop towel I use the workshop towel anything and a really sharp Chisel tool. I'll try to find the link for this one too. And you will need a hot station or soldering station. I'm using a TS100, which is a really adjustable voltage I and mean, heat for this one. You can adjust the heat up to 150, 300 Celsius. But if you have a stationary which is not adjustable, that's fine. And so, with all this on hand, we're going to start doing the service. You will need to do a repaste pretty much, maybe. I'm not too sure, but let's see first. Let's open it up and see what we're going to get inside. All right, first you want to power it off completely. Make sure it's not on hibernation or anything like that. Power it up. Flip it upside down. And for the opening, you need one tool, a screwdriver set. As always, I use the iFixit screwdriver set. These are one of the best screwdrivers out there. We're going to be using a Phillips number zero from this screwdriver set. If you want to get the pro version, it will include you an opening tool, some tweezers, but no, grab the simple set for the opening tool. I'm going to be using a guitar pick, a metallic guitar pick is really suitable to opening covers. All right. Once you flip the laptop on the bottom, you're going to realize that there is no screw. There are a few hidden screws under the rubber legs right here, strip on the top and they strip right on the bottom. To lift them up, just stick the guitar pick right underneath on one corner and go ahead and gently lift it up. You want to pull this one up in 45 degrees. You don't want to yank it over, otherwise you're going to crack the plastic, the rubber. So bring it up just like it towards the ceiling and it's going to have a little adhesive attached to it. You want to put it right beside it. Same thing, you want to do the front end. Take it all the way in there and lift it up, bring it up and put it right beside it. Now we're going to start removing all the screws on the bottom cover. All the screws are the same size and height, so don't worry about mismatching them. Also, if you guys like my content, if my content is helping you up to your replacement service and maintenance, you want to support the channel, you can do that by clicking that like and subscribe. I really appreciate it, and it will be a great motivation for me to make more videos, take requests, and answer your questions. Okay. Once we remove all the screws, all we need to do is to grab the opening tool and we're going to open up the laptop a little bit. And we're going to stick the guitar pick between the top and the bottom cover, just like that. About as much as it can go in, like a two or three millimeters. Now you want to twist it towards the outside. Do it every two or three centimeters. Just keep go ahead and twisting it. Do the sides gently. Go all the way to the back corner. Make sure you hit those click sounds. Do the left and right side. The back corner. Now you want to close up the laptop. Grab the back end. Back here, right on the bottom of the hinge, right at the back, you want to stick it really close to the bottom cover. Right there. And you want to just twist a little bit. Just gentle twist. So you can lose up those clicks. Back here, you want to stick it right there between the top cover and the bottom. You release those corner ones. Yours is already released. There we go. Now it's all already getting released. 
So we're not going to pull up on this side, we, on the USB side, we're going to pull up on this side that there's nothing, only audio, I mean charger port. Lift it up, pull it up, and wiggle it around, and it should come out pretty easy. You just might have to do a little bit of yanking on it, but yeah. All right, down here we got the battery, and pretty much this is a tablet, it's not a laptop. So there's a one upgradable RAM. So before anything, we're going to disconnect the battery. The battery connector is right over here. And we can just go ahead and try to remove the unhook it from here. But it's easier first remove the screws for the battery. So go ahead and remove the screws right here. I'll try to keep the screws in one place. Remove all these screws. Once you remove the screws on here, just go ahead and lift it up a little bit. And you can pull it back. This is a jack, but let's remove the jack too. I'll remove the two screws for the jack. Keep the battery screws in one pile so you know you don't mix them with other screws. Now we can lift up the battery, untangle the cable. Bring it to one side. Now you have more room to play with a jack. All you need to do is to put your fingernails on the sides of the jack right here. Let me lift it up, you guys can see. You see, I'm lifting, putting my nail right there. I'm putting it back evenly. So pull it back evenly. You don't want to yank on the cables. Nothing's going to happen, but preferably pull on the sides of the jack. So that's how you remove the jack. The battery and there's a jack I'm talking about for the connector. So leave this one to one side. Now we need to remove the speaker cable. Same thing. Pull on the cable, wiggle around, or pull on the side of the jack. Sometimes it becomes really hard. I'm using two fingers. You have to wiggle around, and it will come out. All right. Disconnect the flex cable for the trackpad, lift it up 90 degrees, and grab a tweezers, a curved tweezers, so you can pull it back easy. All right, we're going to disconnect the flex cable for the keyboard, lift up 90 degrees, and pull the cable out. The power jack, the charge port jack, untangle this cable right there. And same thing here, you want to pull this jack like the same way that you did the battery back and you get it disconnected. Unhook the flex cable for the LCD, lift it up 90 degrees and pull the connector back. Untangle it, bring it out. The on off switch, remove the flex cable. All right, we're gonna remove the two antenna just. Pull them up towards the ceiling. All right, and pretty much that's it right there. Now we're gonna remove the Wi-Fi board. Remove one screw for the Wi-Fi board. And you can lift up the Wi-Fi board or leave it there. Nothing's gonna happen. Leave it there. Remove the the flat screw on the motherboard. One right there. One. And uh, this one you don't need to remove. Remove the one in the corner here. And remove this one over here. Remove the one in the corner. This magnet is very put it back there. That is screw right there. And the screw in the corner by the speaker. I doubt it that you need to remove these two screws. Just remove this one and lift up the motherboard. And there's your motherboard. There's no more RAM dim on the back. Put the motherboard to one side. Now we need a few more removing stuff. So first detach this cable for the plastic. We're gonna need this isolation plastic we need it. So be careful with it. So pretty much I'm detaching this flex cable for the LCD. I mean for the keyboard. Okay, this part I don't need to because the isolation for this part is useless. First, let's go ahead and remove this one. See how this one should come out. Lift up the lock right there for the battery. Now we're going to gently... If this one rips apart, nothing has happened. It's just, just an isolation. 
has a glue on the sides only. So lift it up, bring it and put it on one side. All right, now we need to remove the hinges or just unhook them. So remove the two screw on this hinge. And lift up the hinge, rotate it. Remove the two, hinge, two screws on this side. And pull it up and again use that if you want to lift it up now you can actually untangle the Wi-Fi cable right there and you can scoop the palm rest out there we have it now we're gonna put the screen to one side so we don't want to damage the screen now we're gonna remove the power jack and last for the precaution, we're gonna remove the on off switch here, remove one screw and lift up and put it to one side. But during the process, we don't wanna damage that one. All right, the keyboard is behind this metal sheet right here. This is a protection sheet. The keyboard is right behind it. So we do need to remove this metal sheet from here. And we're gonna do it by chiseling it out. So the reason I have this towel is to fold it over. So I'll put it right in my palm, right there. So if I don't use it, I'm gonna hurt myself. It's just kind of really sharp. So it becomes a handle. Now, what we wanna do, we wanna remove all these rivets that is touching this top metal. So we're gonna start chiseling it out. If yours is not sharp, sharpen it out. Mine is not too sharp. So you see how much doing it? We're gonna start chiseling it out, the heads of the rivets. So go ahead, do this all for all of them. I'm just gonna fast forward this part and remove all this uh, rivets on top. Chisel everything up, we're just gonna lift up evenly. Make sure you don't bend the, the metal. I'm gonna lift it up. So this one definitely had a water damage because there's a water like a corrosion right here. So we're gonna leave this plate to one side. All right, the cable I was cleaning, the cable came out. Don't worry about it. This keyboard just, I mean, the speaker came out. The speaker goes right here. So, remove the speaker. There's no screws for it. Now we got the keyboard to remove. This keyboard to be removed, there's an easy way to remove it because this keyboard is all not going to work. So, it doesn't matter how you're going to remove it. Simplest thing is just first, you don't need to chisel out the rivet heads. Just lift it up gently from the side and with the pressure it's gonna knock off the uh, heads out so if it's really tough then sure remove the ones that is really tough so what i usually do i pull it to one side i pull it up and pull it gently bring it up So, and this is what you're gonna get left with. So, you don't wanna yank it too hard, so you wanna go gently because you don't wanna damage this mesh right here. So, you don't wanna break those, so you wanna do it. I'm putting my hand here so I don't pull those up, and then I'm pulling the keyboard upward. So there's your old keyboard, nice and deformed. Now, we're gonna need a little bit of plastic to melt for those rivets that is not actually getting all the way to the other side. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna remove the plastic from the space bar here. So we're gonna use this as a donor plastic to melt it over. So let's go ahead and clean up the keyboard a little bit. Bring it here. So 
you're gonna grab the new keyboard we're gonna set it down to make sure first it aligns and it's not different or anything make sure all the keys go through so and the reason we need to reverse otherwise it's not gonna be even it's gonna be over so you want to just pop out really nice so and once we push down on this rivet you can see it's actually coming out from this side up that's perfectly fine that's what you want to see okay those rivets coming up nicely all of them okay i don't know why this keyboard is already being stuck down in there it's already being glued so i'm gonna present it with this one over here it was that way around it was like this it was like that so let me see if i put it through here i'm just gonna present the plate make sure everything is okay and if i put the that's what you want to do always before anything the plastic I'm not going to put, I'm just going to set it down here. Make sure I'm getting access to the flex connection here. That's perfectly fine. There we go. So it's doing its job. Now we're going to turn on the iron station. And we're going to wait for it to heat up. This one heats up pretty quickly. And we're going to push the keyboard down on there. And we're gonna melt the rivets here. We're gonna plant them like a just heat up the head and just put your finger on top quickly so you can rematch them like a put it down. So you see this one is actually sticking out a little bit. So we're gonna heat it up, melt it, and just put quickly your finger over and it just becomes flat. We're gonna do that to all of the screws, all of the rivets right here. And if any of the rivets is not showing up, you can grab a little bit of then the plastic from here and melt it right in there i'm going to show you guys how to so this one is already heated up so let's go ahead and do it on this one that is actually showing up so with the other finger on the back i'm pushing the plastic so i can pinch them i'm going to melt and i'm going to put it right on top there we go same thing with this one over here you don't have to go do it to all of the rivets as long as you do one yes one no type you're fine it's just a keyboard it's not gonna do anything bad it's still gonna work all right now that i did most of them we're gonna verify that the keyboard is nicely aligned in there and all the keys are popping out from the mesh and everything is working fine over here it looks pretty neat all right that's what you want check all the angles once you got all this set now we're gonna put the bracket right on top first put pass through the keyboard the keyboard can come through here or it can come through the other side through here it goes it goes under the keyboard then and it has to go like that it folds because it has a line right here it tells you how it's supposed to be fold but as long as you fold in a it goes in doesn't matter how you fold it so now we're going to do the same thing first we're going to melt the one that is already popping out from this side and if the ones that are not reaching out we're going to use plastic to melt over So I'm going to grab a little bit of plastic from here and I'm going to melt over. I'm going to push it quickly on top. You want to worry about the sides. You don't want to worry about the middle um, uh, patches in the middle. Just go all around. That's fine. You don't need to do the middle. As long as you do the sides, you're fine. The motherboard is not going to go anywhere. There's a two screws here, so the screw is going to hold the plate in, in right in there. So it's not, it's an extra support right there. All 
Right, I'm not. Gonna, I'm gonna keep this video short. I'm not gonna go through all of them right now. So I did few of them on the side. I'm just gonna show you guys. And later on, I'm gonna open up. I'm gonna rematch. Like I put all of the rivets in, most of them. So to keep this video short. So you did the sides as much as you can. You don't have to go every one of them. So there's a screw holes in there, so it holds the cover in place. So don't worry about it. It's not a big deal. Grab the on off switch. Let me turn off this one. Uh, put the on-off switch right in there, slide it in one corner, and put the tiny screw for it. Now you're gonna grab the shielding on the bottom, put the shield right in on top. There's a tiny screw hole that tells you where it's supposed to go. Put it right there. The keyboard. You can rip this apart so you can put the keyboard right in between. Okay. Bring the motherboard in. Align it. Put it right there. Open up the jack. Plug in the on off switch. Put the screws for the motherboard. The flat ones goes right where it's supposed to be, right in here one. Uh, one is between the USB ports. Uh, one right on top here. The small ones go by the RAM. And one right by the speaker cable. And the other one is for the Wi Fi. Okay, once we got all of this in, let's grab the speaker, pull it right in, oh, plug in the cable for the trackpad, it's slide it right underneath, lock it down. Put this one right here, the speaker, plug in the speaker so you don't forget that one. We need to put the lock in the middle, so grab this lock for the battery, put it in there, put the screw for that. All right. Now we're gonna grab this flex cable. The blue strip has to be on top. Slide it right evenly in the jack. Lock it down. And now you can go ahead and tuck it right there. Make sure it's in place. Okay. Grab the battery. Bring it over. Align it. And put it in there. Before you put the battery in, go ahead and first plug in the battery, but I'm not gonna do it first, let's put the screen. So grab the bottom LCD. And bring the cable back. Scoop it right underneath the hinges. And Plug in the flex cable, put it straight all the way into the jack evenly, lock it down. Run the cable for the flex cable in the corner, make sure it's not on the way. Or it's getting pinched. Lock it down, bring down the hinge. Same thing for the Wi-Fi cable. Bring it all around. Zigzagging that thing in there. Okay. All right. Now we're gonna just, doesn't matter which cable goes where, they're both the same. There's number on them, just bring it on top of the jack and just snap it in. They just snap on. There we go. And angle them and close the other hinge. Bring it over. Let's put the four screws, two on each side for the hinges. One here. 
and two on the other side. Remember which two are, these get two close to each other. You don't want to put the third one, so that the third one goes with the cover in. All right, now we're gonna grab the battery. First, we're gonna put it in straight down evenly. And now we're gonna grab the battery, bring it over, align it. Make sure the cable goes on top. Align the hole here. And once it's in place, tangle the jack, the cable right in there. Just zigzagging right in there. Put the four screws for the battery or five screws for the battery. Two big ones by the connector right here. And the three ones is at the back row. We need to put the power jack. I forgot the power jack. I'm trying to do this quickly so you guys see. So we need to unhook this hinge right on this side again. Lift it up just a little bit. Grab the power jack. Put it in there. Just lock it in place. Has to go snapped on. There we go. Bring it tang, move it around here. Bring it and evenly, like the battery you did, goes in. Slide it right in there. There we have. Now put the back down the hinge. Now put the two screws on top. And we should be ready now. We're gonna put the bottom cover, and uh, it's all set to go. And we're gonna see how the keyboard is. All right, everything is in place cables, cables, connectors, flex cables. Grab the bottom case, bring it over. First, put the USB side in, scoop down on this side. And then bring it down, smack down, push down, make sure you hit those clicks on the sides. And put the screws on the bottom of the rubber right here. Again, I hope you guys like this video and helped you guys out. If you have any question or request, feel free to leave them in a video comment. I'll try to answer them as soon as I can. As always, I appreciate it if you guys could subscribe and click that like button. All right, once we got this in, grab the rubber legs, bring it over, put it right there, and put it right there, and that's it. Again, a little tip for you guys. If you guys were really paranoid and look at the keyboard, it looks like a brand new and the heights, everything is working fine. It's really stable and there's nothing wrong with it. And I didn't even put all those rivets in because they're honestly not necessary to do it. But if you don't want, and if you don't want to use this plastic, you can get a filament for a 3D printing filament. You can use that filament to melt in and Pretty much that's it and we're gonna turn it on i don't know if there's a battery on this one uh, yeah it is turned on so and we're gonna test the uh, keyboard all right i gotta reset the bias because we removed the battery so enter so there we got the logo for the hp and it's loading the windows this is pretty slow laptop and once we're in there, we're going to test the keyboard. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in my next video.